So, not so long ago, the Golem game came out and was pretty much universally appraised as the worst game ever created, which is, you know, not that far from the truth. Without a doubt, the game is a massive stinker, as some underappreciated YouTuber might say. But with me being late to everything as always, I just couldn't let the topic slide. But we're not here to talk about the Smeagol game per se, as this topic has been already covered by literally everyone. Firstly, because dunking on a bad game is funny. <laughs> And second, since that it is now a universal fact that oh the game God. is bad, commentary YouTubers can actually criticize the game. What I really want to focus on is a certain aspect of the Goblin game. I've watched and read a lot of reviews about Smeagol, and I gotta say, I've heard this exact point many, many times. In this game, you play as the weakest, most pathetic character from the entire Lord of the Rings universe, a withering, shambling corpse of a creature just barely clinging to life and nobody likes you because you're a little slimy rat bastard and everyone hits you and calls you names the whole game just at the idea level this has to be the least fun idea for a game and today i want to prove that this statement is in fact wrong who even watches donkey anyway that's right unsubscribe from him and subscribe to me what did he say again last of us 2 good Bruh. Doesn't he know that that game is SJW propaganda, SMH? Bass, you, you hate the game as well. This ironic humor does not apply here. Yes, but I hate it for a different reason, which makes me at least, at least 10 million times as smart. What we're talking about? Ah, yes, Mingle, right. <gasps> I think that there is indeed something cool about surviving as a pathetic little gnoblin in a world full of orcs and humans that are twice your size. You are forced to hide, to attack from behind and be cunning and ruthless to everyone you meet. It is crucial for your survival to do so. To be an outcast that absolutely everyone hates, but not as pathetic as Golem in the game, but the one who takes it with pride and joy. Look at Golem in the game. He's pathetic, but in the movies he's also evil and smart despite his looks. Remember how he tricked Frodo into ditching Sam? Now that's a 4D chess move if I have ever seen one. Now if only there was a game that took that concept and reinforced it to almost pure perfection. Oh look, how did that get here? Styx Master of Shadows is the game I want to talk about today. No, not you go. When the backlash over the game started, I was like, wait, why is no one mentioning sticks? It is essentially the same game. Even some of the mechanics are one to one. Climbing, using shadows to hide with your body parts lighting up to indicate that you are indeed hiding, ambushing people from behind that takes a very long time due to your size. If a strong enemy catches up to you, you are instantly dead. But, you know, over in this low budget game, they actually have a death animation, you know, go figure. Also vision that indicates collectibles straight from the Zonat and this is it. Now this is not the end of similar mechanics, this is the end for mechanics from Golem. <laughs> With sticks, we're only starting. You can go ahead and say this. You can go ahead and say hey what's good. You can do this. You can do that, and this is all only a tip of what you can actually do in this game. In the Sticks game, you play as a pathetic little gnoblin. Oh, look at this dude. Who everyone absolutely despises, and he's just pathetic. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? <sighs> He cannot fight, he dies in one hit. Look at how much trouble it is for him to just extinguish a torch. And to that, he says, fuck you. Literally. <laughs> he swears. More of Querberus's bullshit. He makes dirty jokes. And where does he want to put that? Fucking pervert. He's cruel. Basically, he's a goblin. And goblins, goblins are, are real. real. You are not even playing as Styx, you are playing as his long lost cousin, Manfred. Manfred? Uh, yeah, 
I'm here. But you have a lot of skills to compensate for your lack of height. I, I know it sucks being 5 foot 11 sticks, get over it. You can clone yourself to distract enemies, bind them, give them the feeling that they caught you, when in reality, <laughs> nothing personal, kid. No! <laughs> You can also become invisible, which is always cool. You can poison the food, detach chandeliers, push enemies to their death, and these are not gimmicks. These are mechanics crucial to your survival. Now, if you do get caught, you can fight back, but the fighting is very weird. Did they spot me? Yep. Fa oh, I'm right dead. Awesome. You can only parry the attacks, you cannot attack yourself, because, I mean, how does this creature even attack? If you parry enough hits, you can kill the guy, but since I'm playing on the highest difficulty, you fucking die immediately. Now, Golem cannot clone himself, nor can he become invisible, because he's a made-up character, but Goblins, Goblins are, are real. real. But in the movies, Golem would use rocks to kill people, so why not go into the Last of Us approach with this game? Say instead of using the obligatory rock throw to distract an enemy trademark, you use them like knives in Last of Us. This might not work on bigger orcs, but still would be cooler than just watching the same animation just like in The Last of Us. Fuck! It would also be cool to perhaps make Golem use the environment to his advantage, just like in Sticks, but alas... No. Now, I'm not saying that Styx is perfect, in fact, it is far from it. The climbing feels clanky with you being unable to even go around the corner while hanging, the AI is laughably bad and buggy, which usually results in you getting caught, the levels that they reuse for 2-3 to three times each, the later levels that are extremely oversaturated with uncurable guards, but the game is still really fun. Not a masterpiece by any means, just a simple, fun stealth game that felt like a blessing after my Assassin's Creed torture. And it really has a lot of neat little mechanics, like if you fall from a high place, you will get detected, but if you actually land on the carpet, you will fall almost silently, and I'm saying almost because if the jump is too high, the guts will still get alerted. If you drink a flask, that's a noise. If you clone, that's a noise too. If you collide with a physics object, that's also a noise that the developers love to play with, it is so cool. The light mechanics are very fun and remind me of old Sith games but less complex, although this mechanic does get completely thrown out of the window later due to there being unextinguishable lights around every corner, it is still pretty fun. If you treat this game as a playground and do not expect a flawless masterpiece, try the game yourself, you will not be disappointed. <sighs> No! So what do I want to say with this video? That goblins, goblins are, are real. real. The concept of golem works, and it works really well when you actually try to make a video game. In fact, I would love to see a good Smeagol game, preferably without the Smeagol. <gasps> the guy is ugly. <gasps> okay, you know what? No, take me back to Smeagol, I was wrong. Also, a little thing, I've seen a lot of people make fun of the inner debate mechanic. Uh, pretty wild to me, as I found it to be really funny, fitting and neat, but oh well. So, in conclusion, don't play Smeagol, play Sticks, and don't forget to unsubscribe from Donkey and subscribe to me. W what did he say again? Xenoblade Chronicles suck? Well, that's just facts, to be honest. Soon I'm